So far in this section, we have learned that when a function is called, an execution context for that function gets created in the call stack. And for each execution context, during the creation phase, a variable object is created, its scope chain is determined, and also the value of this variable is calculated. Now, we learned how the variable object is created for an execution context. After variable object is created, the scope chain for the current execution context is also determined. So, before we learn how a scope chain is created, let's briefly understand what a scope is and what are the different types of scopes we have in JavaScript. Now, we have already learned about scope and learned what is a global scope and local scope in one of the lectures of this course. There, we also learned about block scope in brief. But since we are going to talk about scope creation in execution context, before we learn about that, let's revise what we have learned about scope and what are the different types of scopes we have in JavaScript. So, scope controls how JavaScript variables are organized and accessed by the JavaScript engine. A scope tells where the JavaScript variable and function lives and where we can access a certain variable or a function and where we cannot. In most simple words, scope of a variable or a function is the entire region inside which that variable or that function can be accessed and used. And in JavaScript, we have three types of scope. We have global scope, we have function scope and we have block scope. Now, function scope and block scope are almost similar except one difference and that we will talk about in this lecture. So, let's start by understanding what is a global scope. The top level code, that is the variables and functions that are not present inside any other function or code block is called as global variables and functions and they have global scope. And whichever function and variable has global scope, that function and that variable can be accessed from anywhere in our JavaScript program. Here we have a very simple example. And in this example, the first name and last name are two global variables. And this calculate age function is a global function because these two variables and this calculate age function is not present inside any other function or inside a code block. So these are global variables and functions and they can be accessed from anywhere in our JavaScript program. Okay, so the global variables and global functions can be accessed from anywhere inside the JavaScript program. They can be accessed in any code block or inside any function. Then we have function scope. So each and every function in JavaScript, it creates its own scope. The variables and functions which we create inside any other function is only accessible inside that function. And this is also called as local scope. So for example, in the same example, inside this calculate age function, we are creating three variables, birth year, current year, and age. So these three variables are created inside the calculate age function. So they can only be accessed and used inside this calculate age function. Outside of this calculate age function, these variables cannot be accessed. In the same way, inside this calculate age function, we are also creating this is full age function. And since this is full age function is created inside this calculate age function, this function can be accessed and used only inside this calculate age function. Outside of this calculate age function, this function will not be visible. It cannot be accessed. And hence, it cannot be called outside of this calculate age function. Okay, so when a variable or a function has function scope, they can only be accessed and used inside that function where they are declared. And these variables and functions are not visible outside of their parent function. In the same way, this is full age function, which is created inside this calculate age function, it will also create its own scope. Okay, and whatever variables and functions we are creating inside this is full age function will be only accessible inside that function. It cannot be accessed outside of that function. In this example, inside this is full age function, we are creating a variable called is eligible. So this is eligible variable can only be accessed and used inside this is full age function. It cannot be used outside of this is full age function. So here, 
this calculate age function is creating its own scope and in the same way this is full age function is also creating its own scope and this is called as function scope now it does not matter how we are creating the function whether we are creating that function using function declaration syntax or function expression syntax or arrow function syntax all types of functions creates their own scope okay now traditionally before es6 the only way to create a new scope was by using a function there was no block scope concept before es6 but starting from es6 we can also create block scopes and by block we mean everything that is created using curly braces for example when you write an if block to write the body of that if block we use a set of curly braces and inside that we write the body of that if block so that if block will create its own scope in the same way when we write a for loop or while loop to write the body of that for loop or while loop again we use a set of curly braces and inside that we write the body of that loop so that also create its own scope in this example we have this if statement where we are specifying some condition and after that we are using a set of curly braces and inside that we are writing the body of that if block so here this opening and closing curly braces it is called as code block and here it is creating a block scope inside this if statement we are creating two variables message1 and message2 so this message1 and this message2 are present inside this code block so they will have block scope now here there is a catch block scope can only be created when we use let or const keyword to create a variable or a function okay so the block scope is only created when we use let or const keyword to create a variable now a variable declared using var keyword will always have function scope even if the variable is declared inside a code block so in this example this message one variable is created using let keyword but this message two variable is created using var keyword now since this message one variable is created using let keyword it will have a block scope this message one variable will only be accessible it will only be visible inside this if block because it is there where we are declaring it but this message two variable since it is created using var keyword it will have function scope so even though this message to variable is created using this if block it will be accessible from anywhere inside this calculate age function you can also access and use it outside of this if block because it will have function scope and this is the difference between function scope and block scope a variable or a function will only have block scope if it is created using let or const keyword okay if we create it using var keyword in that case it will have function scope no matter where you are declaring that variable if it is declared using var keyword it will have function scope it can be accessed and used anywhere in that function where it is declared in this example this message to variable is declared inside this calculate age function so this message to variable can be accessed and used anywhere inside this calculate age function but that is not true for this message one variable because it is created using let keyword so it will have block scope it can only be accessed and used inside this if block outside of this if block this message one variable will not be accessible it will not be visible and this is the reason why prior to es6 we only had global scope and function scope there was no block scope because a block scope is created when we use let or const keyword to create a variable or a function and a function will also have block scope if it is used in strict mode so when we use strict mode and when we create a function inside a code block let's say inside an if statement or inside a for loop then that function will also have block scope but only if we are creating it in strict mode in the non strict mode even if we create a function inside a code block it will have function scope so these are the three types of scopes we have in javascript now in javascript we have something called as lexical scoping so let's understand what is lexical scoping lexical scoping means that 
the way variables are organized and accessed is entirely controlled by the placement of the function and of the block in that program code. For example, if a function or a code block is sitting lexically within another scope, then the function or the code block will have access to all the variables and functions declared inside its parent scope. Let's understand it with an example. So here we have a global scope. So anything which is not present inside any function or code block is present in global scope. In this example, first name, last name variable and calculate age function is present inside the global scope. Inside that global scope, we are creating this calculate age function. So this calculate age function is going to create its own scope, right? And since this calculate age function is sitting in the global scope, this calculate age function will have access to all the variables and functions declared in the global scope. In the same way, this is full age function is sitting lexically within the calculate age function. So as we learned, every function creates a scope. The calculate age function is also creating a scope. And in that scope, we are declaring this is full age function. So this is full age function is also creating a scope. And this scope is sitting lexically within the scope of calculate age function. So this is full age function will have access to all the variables and functions which is declared in the scope of calculate age function. And since this calculate age function is sitting lexically within the scope of global scope, this is full age function will also have access to all the variables and functions declared in the global scope. So this is full age function will have access to its parent scope and its parent scope. All right. Now here in this example, this if block is also creating a scope. So in this scope, since it is sitting lexically within the scope of calculate age function, in this scope also, we will have access to all the variables and functions declared in the scope of calculate age function. So inside this if block, we will have access to birth year variable, current year variable and age variable, as well as we will have access to this is full age function. But you see this if block and this is full age function, these are not sitting lexically within each other, right? They are sitting parallelly with each other. So this is full age function will not have access to variables declared in the if block. Although this is full age function will have access to this message to variable because this message to variable will have function scope. That means it will be accessible from anywhere within this calculate age function. And since this is full age function is sitting lexically within this calculate age function, whatever is present in the scope of calculate age function can be accessed inside this is full age function. And since this message to has function scope, this is full age function will have access to this message to variable, but not to message one variable because message one variable has block scope. It can only be accessed within this curly braces within this code block. But message two has function scope, so it can be accessed within this is full age function, which is sitting lexically within this calculate age function. I hope this point is clear. So this is all I wanted to cover in this lecture before explaining how a scope chain is created during the creation phase of execution context. I just wanted to make sure that you understand what are the different types of scopes we have in JavaScript and as I have mentioned earlier, we have already covered this topic in one of the previous lectures of this course. So you can also go through that lecture to understand this concept practically. But here I wanted to cover this concept theoretically so that when we move to the next lecture, you understand how the scope chain gets created. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.